In this video I will show how to make a servo steered car that can learn how to drive a particular ride. In addition to a microbit, I have used a Lego-like construction set called Netza. I have built the car as shown here. Unfortunately, four wheels with tires are not included in the Netza set, so here I have borrowed from my LEGO collection. A short shaft and two small black gear wheels are mounted on the server motor. The Netza board can be mounted as seen here. The red motor is connected to M1 and the server motor is connected to S1 with the yellow wire pointing upwards. Now the car looks like this. Instead of the Lego wheels, you can use four gear wheels from the Netza set as shown here. Here is the program that needs to be downloaded to the microbit. You must start by downloading the extension called Netza. The program is meant to receive data from another microbit which is used as a transmitter. The number received is transferred to the run function where a one number causes the car to move forward, a two number causes it to drive backwards, a three number causes it to stop, and another number causes the servo motor to rotate a number of degrees. When the program starts, it sets the servo motor to the center position. Now make sure that the wheels are pointing straight forward. Here is the program for the transmitter. You can see which buttons send the numbers 1, 2 and 3. When you tilt the transmitter about the x-axis, MTX will have a value between plus 1023 and minus 1023. The value is converted to degrees between 0 and 190, which causes the servo motor to turn. The degrees are delivered with a number of decimals, so they will never be exactly 1, 2 or 3. Now the steering looks like this. And then we take a ride. Now I have mounted a switch, a crash sensor that comes with the set. To make it work, download the Planet X extension and go to the sensor menu item. And then you can add this little program. Now the car responds to obstacles. I have again changed the receive program so that the car can learn to drive a certain trip. I start by pressing button B and then I control the car with the transmitter. When the trip is over, I move the car to the starting point and press button A. Now the trip is repeated.
I can repeat the trip as often as I want. The ride is made from the data stored in the microbit. If I press both button A and B, I can see how much data is stored. There are limits to how much data a microbit can hold, but there is enough data for a fine trip. Microbit version 2 can contain 8 times as much data as version 1. When I press button B, all data is deleted. Now the receive program looks like this. When you press button A, the radio is set to a wrong channel and the ride is repeated. When you press button B, the data is reset and the radio channel becomes the correct one again. The reset function, which is called at the start of the program, and when you press button B, looks like this. Here two empty arrays, list and pause, are created. They can store two sets of data that automatically get an index starting at zero. When a number is received from the transmitter, it is stored in the array called list. The time that has elapsed since the last event is calculated and saved in pause. Each time a new set of data arrives, it is saved at the end of the arrays. We look at an example. An empty array has been created here. Here is a set of data, some random numbers, which have been given a certain index from 0 to 9. Data with index 3 has the value 9. Now look at the repeat function in our program. Here the stored data is read, one set at a time. Each time a pause is taken and the current instruction is forwarded to the motors. The length of array block can find out how many records we have stored. Here I have taught the car a new route which it repeats.